So I'm recording right now. So my name is Drew Wallace, and I am from NWA3D, and we're going to go over the basics of how to 3D print and then some common troubleshooting issues and things like that and kind of walk through step by step the stuff that will come up. So to, before we get too much more into it, do you guys have another 3D printer besides these at Discovery Center? Mm -mm. This is our first one. Awesome. I love starting from scratch. So uh, uh, the biggest thing then um, is going to be the design step when you're actually going to be creating things. So we're, what do you guys think you're going to have the 3D printers? I think we're going to use them for lots of things. I think we're going to take them into classrooms for um, educational experiences for kids. I think we'll have them here on our floor when we have staff to do that. I think we're going to use them at birthday parties. Ashley and I talked about we might even have one out at a marketing table if we're out in the community at an event. Yeah, um, awesome. they're real portable for you too. So we, we have actually already used them for one of our summer camps. We have a research scientist that's pretty technologically savvy. She's going to be joining us probably here in about five minutes. Okay. Awesome. She used it for her, a camp called Tech Creative, which was an all girls like technical camp. Great. And they printed all kinds of stuff. They made stamps. They made, um, you know, one girl made a wedding cake. They, they use Tinkercad to do that. So none of us in here know how to do that, but she is in our community and willing to help us. So she's already kind of played with them a little bit, but so far she's the only one that has used them. That's going to be the biggest step then. So that's awesome that you have somebody experienced with, with Tinkercad as like a CAD design program because the biggest, largest step, the most time consuming, all of that is going to be the design step where the students are actually going to create models in 3D. So the Tinkercad works great because it works on Chromebooks and any computer with a web browser. It's awesome and it's free. Um, it's made by the same company who makes Autodesk, which is for like a high school level um, CAD program, which is also free for educators and stuff like that if you guys are going to get more advanced. But we'd recommend sticking with Tinkercad to start off. And then if you want to move up into one more that's just a little bit more powerful than Tinkercad, you can check out Onshape.com. So if you have some Onshape, O-N-S-H-A-P-E. And that's on our website too. In our education section, you can see our 3D design recommendations and, and their tutorials to Onshape and to Tinkercad. That are okay. And that's just in our education section. And I'll send you a link after this with this video and to all that information as well. Okay, awesome. Check that out. Okay. It's basically good for uh, like precocious middle school kids and junior high. And if you go into high school, then you can use Onshape because you can get a lot more stuff. Um, created and it's more like a traditional CAD program where you're going to draw a design and then stretch and extrude that design up so you're create different types of designs so um, it's awesome and that's going to be the biggest step uh, and that first step is the design and the creation step and you can also find places online that have files and stuff like that and, you know, I mean kids aren't going to learn too much if they're just printing off baby groups all the time but you, there are educational models and stuff like that that you can find and there's also links to that in our lesson plan page so you can go to my mini factory and Thingiverse and my print lab, and those are some great repertoires as well. And we have some on our website that you can find in our lesson plan section of education. And I'll also send you links to that so you'll be able to check it out. Okay, awesome. So that first huge step where you're going to create that model, that's what's going to be the most time consuming and they're going to work on a lot. And then that second step is where they're actually going to code it for the printer itself. And that's done in a program called Cura. C-U-R-A. And you actually take that three-dimensional file and you have to turn it into the language of the printer, kind of like reading a recipe. And it's just a text-based file that it turns it into of directions on where the motors are going to move around. So this one's going to move this way, and it's going to extrude this much filament, and it's going to move this way a little bit, extrude a little bit more filament to layer together, layer by layer by layer by layer, like a hot glue gun, to be able to form that three-dimensional model. So do you guys have Cura installed on your computer? We have one on the distance learning computer. I can go get that if we need it today. Yeah. That'd be awesome, because then we can go over the settings and make sure all the settings are correct, because that's one of the big troubleshooting things is making sure that all the settings are correct in Cura. Okay. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind going grab that, that'd be awesome. In the distance learning studio, you want to go grab that? Right here, right here. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay. We've got you on the projector and then we'll get the laptop that has Cura on it up here in just a second. Yeah, and we can install it on another laptop too if you want to do that. That's fine. Um, okay. 
walk you through all the different steps and how to install it. So the Cura is found on the SD cards. Is that where you guys found it? Okay. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to preload it on the micro SD. Uh-huh. So anybody, any of you that want this on your computer, you can take an SD card today and upload it onto your device if you want to. Okay. Okay, so hey, come on in. Yeah, take a spot. So Cura is going to be the size of your build area. So all the settings that you set here, imagine that is this area of your printer right here. So when you put something up here in this top left corner, it's going to go in the top left corner of your build plate right here when you're moving things around. So keep that in mind as we're kind of moving things around and, and looking at them. I'm kind of sure. Okay. Make this a little bit smaller so it fits better. There we go. All right. Do you guys have it ready? No, it's all the way in our basement. So we, we can install it on the one that we've got you on, but then I'm worried we're not going to be able to see you. Um, yeah, you can kind of like move me down to the bottom a little bit. Like you can click on the top and say like uh, exit full screen mode. Okay. Then, like, oh, okay. If you want to do that, you totally can. And then can someone else please hand me one of those SD cards? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to get this going here. I'm so sorry. I did not know that we were unprepared. Can you forgive me? No, I'm never going to forgive you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. So with, uh, with Cura, just go ahead and install it until you get to this screen right here where it says add new machine and new printer wizard. And the thing about Cura is it's profile specific. So if you install it on one program, on one profile and then you log out and then like a student logs into that, then all the settings in Cura are not going to be set up, all the settings that we're going to set. So you have to set it up for that specific profile. And once you set it up, though, it's going to save all those settings. So you won't have to change them. Okay. Okay, I'm on the installation wizard. All right. Yeah, go ahead and just say yes and next on all those things that it needs until you get to the where it says finish. And then when you click finish, it'll pop up with a start new printer wizard. All right. Okay. It'll look like this. Okay, we're almost there. I can't see you though. I need to find out how I can see you, but okay. Yeah, and you have to like give it permission and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. I think it's installing it again. Uh, I installing the Arduino files. Here we go. First time run wizard. Perfect. Next. Okay, got it. Go ahead and click next, and then the type of printer is going to be other. Okay, awesome. Because hmm. we build these ourselves in Fable. So then next. So then do, do I click any other machine information? Yes, you're going to click Mendel right here. M -E -M. Mendel. So we do it on the other one. And this is in the user manual. And then we also have a, a, a video that goes right through this. And then I'm going to share this video with you too. So okay, awesome. We'll okay, we're ready. We are ready. And then next. And then ready to be used. Woohoo. And then click finish. Okay. So it's now, this is what you see right here. Yeah, a little robot. So these are the settings that we're going to change. And I'm going to load a model in here, just like your robot. So if you want to load a robot, you click load. And then you load that STL file, so that file that you made in Tinkercad. So I, I'm in the SD card right now. So we have SD cards and then a five STL files and then six-sided die. Because you need to have the file type be .stl or .obj to load it into Cura. Those are the two file types. Okay, got it. And this is on the SD card too, so you can find it if you want. Then we'll hit open. And then I'll have a little model right here that's also yellow. So then now... Question. What will Tinkercad say? What's the file type for Tinkercad? It, it'll be .stl. When you click on download, it'll say download for 3D printing, and then it'll say .stl, and you'll just click on it. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's right now on the like top right corner of Tinkercad. Okay. So now we're going to set these settings up, and like I mentioned before, once you set them, it will remember them all. So we're going to set the layer height. Point two is how tall each one of the layers are stacked together. So as a, okay. So point 0.2 is two tenths of a millimeter. So if you want to do low quality and print faster, you can go to point 0.3. Or if you want to do high quality and print slower, you can go to point 0.1. Okay. 
And then the shell thickness is going to be 0 0.8. And that is a multiple of our nozzle size, which is 0.4, which is down here. And that's the actual thickness of the outside of our model. So that is like the wall right here of our model is this. OK. And then we're also going to have the bottom and top thickness set to 0.8 as well. And then the fill density, that's how much is filled up inside of your model. So if you want it to be hollow, this would be zero. And you can see the time is going to change up here to not print as long. Or if you wanted it to be solid, you could do 100. But it's not really necessary to do 100. It's usually fine to have it somewhere between 5 and 20%. Because it's going to use a lot of filament if you fill it all the way in. So print speed, we'll go ahead and leave that at 50. And then temperature, we'll change that to 220. That's what we want to melt our PLA at. Because it actually has a special ingredient inside of it that makes it more malleable and bendable than regular PLA. So that's why it heats a little bit hotter than normal PLA. It melts at 220. And then this right here, this bed temperature, it does not have a heated bed. So that's zero. And you don't need a heated bed with PLA at all, which is the type of material that this is. It's biodegradable corn plastic. That's what you're printing with. And then support type, we'll click everywhere, just in case it ever needs it. It will create it. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to change this diameter right here to 1.75. And that is the diameter of the filament. And you can see the filament, it says right here, 1.75, right there. So now we're going to set up our size of our printer, and then we'll be done. So we're going to click machine, and then machine settings. Now, Jimmy, are you expecting that I am doing all this at the same time as you, or is this all stuff we can go back and do after the video? It's up to you. You can do it at the same time as me, and I'll walk you through it, or you can do it later. If, I, if, if it's not important for us to do it now, I can do it later. Yeah, you can do it later. That's fine. Okay. That's so then, now we're going to set these up right here. So these settings are going to be 125 by 150 by 100. And those are the sizes of our build area. That's the size of this right here. So 125 is about 5 inches. 150 is 6 inches. That's across. And then it's about 4 inches tall. And it's actually this size. This is the biggest that it can print. So this whole area is the build area of the printer. Pretty much the entire space inside of the printer. That's pretty big. Yeah, 6 by 5 by 4 inches. So then well, now we're uncheck this heated bed right here. And we always have to make sure we uncheck that because it won't print if the heated bed is heated. So it's really important to uncheck this. Okay. And then we'll click OK. And now our model's ready. Woohoo! So you can hold the right mouse button and kind of move it around and adjust it. You can even click rotate and rotate your model because if you want, you can add as many models as you want. So you can hit load and I could load maybe another keychain right here. So you can put as many models out here as you want, as long as they don't turn gray. If they turn gray, that means that they're off the build area. You can see now this slice time, that's how long it's going to take to print went way down. It's only 22 minutes if it's just that, because this is gray. It did not get coated. But if you move this in here to where it turns yellow and let go, now it's going to be 46 minutes. And it's going to tell you how much filament it's going to use. And this time is it's within about five minutes of each other. And then we're going to click scale too. And if you're not worried about the scale of your object, you can actually drag this and make it a lot bigger if you want. Or you can use the digital caliper that it comes with to measure something to be an exact size for like a prototype and print it off down to the tenth of a millimeter. So if you wanted to make a, a foot for a chair or a doorstop or something like that for a gearing system, students could design that to be exact. Robert, you can print doorstops. <laughs> we always lose those here. Yeah, you're totally good. And then I'm going to rotate this a little bit to the side. And you can see that it, you want to have a large area touching the bill plate. This right here isn't a very good print orientation because there's not very much of it touching the bill plate itself. So that's something that you also want to keep in mind. And you can actually click view mode and go to layers and see what each individual layer is doing. So this right here, as it's printing, it's this little turquoise right here, that's the support structure that it automatically generated. And you can see it needed that support to be able to print like that. And you can actually move this down and see what each individual layer is going to do. So you can see the infill inside of it on what every single layer is going to print as it's printing. So then we'll go back to normal. 
And then when you're ready to save it, we need to do the third step. And the third step is transferring it to the printer. So you create a model, you load the model into Cura, and then slice it. And that was what this is going on right here. And then you're going to save that model to the SD card. So you'll have your SD card in there. And if your SD card is plugged in, you'll either see an SD right here where you can save it straight to the SD card, or you can right click and say save G code, or click on that right there. And then you can save the G code to wherever you want. So I'm going to go down here to NWA 3D, and then I'm going to save it right here. So here's the six sided die, the D6, and then hit save. And that is that transfer step. And you can see it's loaded right here. And then we'll eject it. So I can open the folder and eject it right here. I always want to eject it before I just yank it out. And then it ejects, and you'll take this micro SD card, and then you'll take the SD card out of it and put it in the front of the printer. So it's going to go right here. It's going to go in and then click and snap into the front of the printer. And there are already files on the front of the printer uh, that are inside of that SD card. So we can actually print all those printers today. And that's what we're going to move on to for this next step. Okay, yeah, they're all getting an SD card. If you guys have any questions about Cura and the first big troubleshooting part is making sure all those Cura settings are set up. No, I'm so glad we recorded this. That's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch of stuff. And, and we're here too. You can call us. You can send us an email. You can go to our support. I'll send you a link to that where you can fill out a support request. We want to help you out. So you're not in the dark. We're, we got your back every step of the way. So would you like us to go ahead and uh, plug these printers in? Yeah, sure. now, wanna... before we do that, we're going to test all the printers and make sure that they all all mechanically sound. So the first thing we checked was Cura, and then now we're going to make sure everything is mechanically set up right. So okay. we just want to look at all the parts of the printer and make sure that all the plugs are plugged in and nothing's really loose and nothing got damaged. Nothing got damaged on the way down to War Rock. So okay. especially since you guys are going to be moving them around, if you ever hit print and something just doesn't work or it goes like, it sounds like a dying transformer or something like that, then it probably means that one of these plugs have come undone. So each one of these motors has a plug. And there's also a little switch down here that also has a little plug to it right there as well. So there are three of these, and then there are four plugs for each one of the motors. So you have your X motor, which goes this way. You have your Y motor right here, and that plug, which th that's this one. And then you have your Z, which is up and down, and that one is right here, where it spins this. Well, it spins this up and down. And then this is your E or extruder motor. So go ahead and check all those and make sure that all the plugs are plugged in like they're supposed to be. And then while you're checking those plugs, you also want to make sure that the belts are tight. So there's a belt right here and a belt right here. And make sure that these belts are tight and these idler pulleys are out all the way to the end and they're not bent or broken or anything like that. And the belt is nice and taut. How are they going? You think they're pretty good? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah? Okay, awesome. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab onto the side of this, like right here, and then try to rock it back and forth. Like you can actually try to pick the printer up and set it back down. And it should not rock. The plate, this plate right here, should not rock back and forth like that. It should, pick, the whole printer should move when you do this. If it rocks back and forth like that, then we need to tighten it. Just the blue part or the part under it? This, the whole thing. Yeah, you can grab like right here. And then the whole printer should move. If, it, if this rocks back and forth at all, it should only go left and right. It shouldn't go up and down like that. It should only go this way and that way. Okay. Is that good? Okay, yep. Yeah, okay, awesome. So those are some basic, just like machine, making sure that the machine's working properly and making sure all those are going together. And then now we are gonna come to the hardest part of running the 3D printer. And that is leveling the build plates themselves. So what I mean by that is that the nozzle has to be about the thickness of a folded piece of paper from the build surface because it has to lay down those layers, layer by layer by layer by layer to form that model. And those layers have to be close enough to stick together to be able to form it. So that's what we're gonna adjust right now on the printer. So go ahead and grab just a folded piece of paper, any folded piece of paper will do, and just fold it in half. Okay. 
And then we'll take this folded piece of paper and plug the printer in, and that is what we're going to use to test the leveling procedure. So we don't need a regular level. It's actually going to be level with itself when we set it up. Okay, we've got to plug our printers in really fast. That's fine. We've got plenty of time. How often do they need to be leveled, Drew? Not very often. But if you're going to be moving them around a lot, you always want to make sure that you're carrying them by the handle up here. And that will help them to not have to leave them so much. But you'll know this is going to be the most common troubleshooting issue. So that's just something to keep in mind. And once you get some practice at it, you'll be able to rock it out in like 30 seconds. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. And do you guys have the spool holders all together too? Do you have these together? <laughs> no, we have a couple of them, but we don't have them all built yet. So we're going to build these too. Okay. Like some of y'all can build these while other people level the build plates because it takes a second. They're already built. I built them already. You did? Okay, awesome. That is a real for you to build that goes like this. They all hold me somewhere. Right, you guys got them all plugged in? It's not an outlet, it's an ethernet plug. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, hold up. Got them all plugged in, ready to go? Okay, yeah, will you stick me in there? Almost. One more second, Drew. This one. Is this where you plug it in right here? Is there a swap right here? My computer might have enough battery. Okay. Ready? They're all coming on. Okay. <laughs> well, we're not going to load the filament yet. We're going to level the bill plates first. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Okay. Are you guys ready? Okay. All right. So we're going to take our folded piece of paper, and that's what we're going to use as the distance between the nozzle and the build surface. But before we do that, we have to home it, and that's going to bring these motors to zero. So to do that, we're going to tap this button, and everything is going to be controlled by spinning and tapping this. And then we're going to spin to where it says setup, and then we're going to go to where it says auto home, and then tap that. Did you say auto home? Auto home. Okay. 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 Move all these motors to zero, and that is point zero. And we're going to set the Z height to the zero level that we need, and that's what we're going to adjust. So we're only going to move this motor and this motor. We're not going to move the up and down motor at all. And to do that, we have to unlock them. So we're going to tap this button, and then we're going to go to setup. Go to where it says disable motors. And if it makes a loud noise like that, unplug it because that means that something's in the way of it, of it moving. There might be a wire in the way or something's, something's in the way from it moving and, and hitting the end stop click switch. And everyone also needs to have this blue build surface on the printer. They all have that. You do? Okay, awesome. Because you have to always print on this print surface. You can't print straight on the acrylic or it'll just melt the acrylic. All right, so now you guys can move this one back and forth and this one back and forth. And I'm actually going to be like picking my printer up and moving it around. But you want to leave yours flat on the table and just move it side to side. And then you'll adjust it by these little screws down here. So I'm going to pick mine up so you can see it. But you want to leave yours flat because these are the bolts that we're going to change. So this one and this one 
and then the one that's inside right here, the third one right here. But we're gonna do one at a time, and we're gonna do really small increments at a time. So the first one that we're gonna do is this front one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and move this over to where it's above that little wing nut. And then we're gonna take our folded piece of paper and fit that in there. And it might be kinda of close, a close fit, that's okay. Because you can squeeze this right here and actually squeeze it together to fit it in there to make sure that your piece of paper is between the nozzle, the blue build surface, and then the little screw right here. Yeah, if it doesn't fit, do we undo the bolt? Just push the bed down. Just squeeze this right here, yeah. You just take this and then you can just squeeze it together and then you can move the paper in between it. Because we're going to make it fit right now. You just want to make sure that, like I said before, you leave yours flat on the table. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, I got it. Okay. So now I'm, well, I'm going to move this. So I'm going to drag that piece of paper. I'm going to set my hand on the piece of paper and then wiggle it. And you want it to feel it dragging almost like you put your finger down on the piece of paper and then you move that piece of paper and you feel it dragging on your fingernail. That's what you want it to feel like on the nozzle tip itself. So when you move this, it's gonna drag. And if it doesn't drag, then that means that it's too far away. So the bill plate is too low. And if, it's, if it doesn't move at all, then it's too high up. The bill plate is pushed up too high. And that's what we're gonna adjust using this right here. So when you tighten this, it's actually gonna pull this down away from the nozzle. So it's gonna make it looser on top. And then when you loosen this and turn this clockwise, it's actually gonna push it up closer and make it tighter on top. So it's counterintuitive. So you only wanna do like a small fourth of a turn increment at a time and then test it. And then a small fourth of a turn increment and then test it. Until you feel it dragging on that piece of paper. So only little increments at a time. Should it pull the, the filament, you know, should it pull the nozzle with it, or should it slide out underneath it? It should slide. So the knot, this should stay in the same place, and this should move back and forth, and you feel it dragging as it moves. Gotcha. Almost like your, your finger was right here, and it was dragging on, and your finger was attached to it like that. So That's what you should have it feel like. Okay, I got it. I must have got one you already did, but mine's perfect. <laughs> what do you guys think? You got that corner? There's a wide range in which you can feel that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I like it. Do you do the same thing at each one of those? Yes, once you get this one good, then you'll push this whole bill plate over and then do the same thing right here until you feel about the same amount of tension with this one. So like this one's still a little bit loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit clockwise so it's a little bit closer and then test it. There we go, now it's right where we want it to be. And then once you have that one feeling like this one, then you're gonna move it to the inside right here. So you're gonna move this whole thing over and then move this down and test this inside one. And this is where it gets tricky because it's a triangle, when you tighten one, it's gonna push the other two up. And when you loosen it, it's gonna push them like this. It's gonna, because it's a triangle, it's gonna move them all around, they're all connected. So this one in the middle is gonna be a little tight so we're gonna move this out and then use this to actually tighten this one right here. So we're gonna turn this one counterclockwise. So you, it's easier for, for me to pull it all the way out here and then turn this like a little bit counterclockwise and then move it back and then test it. And then when you feel about the same amount of tension, so I'll move it back out, maybe turn it just a tiny bit more the other way. So a little bit clockwise. There we go, until you feel the same amount of tension there that you felt on these other two corners. And you'll know it's not level if when it starts printing, it knocks the model loose and starts moving around like a giant pile of spaghetti. Or if it's too close and it digs into the bill plate and it makes like digging trenches or digging uh, like marks in the filament and stuff like that, that means it's too close. So if it doesn't stick and start layering, then that has something to do with the bill plate, especially if it gets knocked loose. And that's the most common issue is it'll, get, it'll knock the model loose. And that means it just needs to be a little bit closer. Yeah, Drew, we joked that our first print was a tape worm. That's exactly what happened. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay.
Yeah, if, it, if it's making a mark in the paper, that's too tight, right? Yes, and okay. that's where the folded piece of paper comes in. Like, if it's digging, though, you can see mine's pretty dinged up. As long as it doesn't rip the paper, that's okay. If it okay. rips the paper, that's fine, because you can see how many marks are on this one. So it kind of depends on how deep the marks are. You just want to make sure that as long as it's folded, you're, you're good to go. Okay, that's so good. Yeah, mine's definitely marking it, but it's not ripping it. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to grip the paper like this and then move it like that and feel it dragging. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but. I guess one thing that I have to like that was pretty. We oh. <laughs> saved this for uh, a reminder. <laughs> yeah, and the trick is to always do really tiny increments when you move it. So, like, go just a tiny bit and then test it. And then a tiny bit, and then test it. And a tiny bit, and then test it. How are they going? I think we're getting close. There's one still working on the back. Yeah, it can be kind of tricky. Well, the trick is to get your students to do this all the time, then you don't have to do it again. Y'all think you're ready? All right, awesome. So then now what we're going to do is we're actually going to heat the nozzle up because there can be hardened bits on the bottom of the nozzle that can actually give you an inaccurate reading. So we're going to heat the nozzle up now and then test the leveling again. So to do that, we're going to tap this button and then we're going to go back to setup. And then it says preheat PLA that we're going to tap on. And you'll see now it's going to start heating up and you'll see the temperature going right there. And then while it's heating up, we're going to go back and auto home it again. Is it okay to keep the paper on there, Drew? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. And then once it stops moving, then we can disable the motors again. So are we supposed to go to set up? Yes, set up and then auto home. Auto home, okay. There we go. And then you'll see that it's heating up. And when it gets to about 150, you can go around and start testing each one of these corners again and make sure that it's still dragging. Because now it's going to actually knock the filament loose of the nozzle. So you might need to make it a little bit tighter. So I'm going to turn this one a little bit counterclockwise. There we go. Move over and try this one. There we go. So that one's a little too, too tight, too. You go turn that one a little bit counterclockwise. Until you feel it dragging that about that same amount of tension. And then the one on the inside too. Kind of move that one. There we go. That one feels good. And the only part that gets hot is underneath here in the in this back area. You would have to push your finger all the way past this, this little protective joint right here, all the way back in there. So that brass nozzle part, that's the only part that gets hot. None of these other parts get hot anywhere on the printer.
Only that brass part where the actual nozzle is in there. You guys see that? Yeah. So once it heats up, we're re-leveling. Is that the summary of what just happened here? Yes, we're re-leveling just to knock off all the bits of filament that might be stuck on the end and giving us an inaccurate reading. But we don't want to do that first because if it's too if it's too close, it might dig into our bill plate and kind of nick it up. And these are made to get really tore up. You can kind of see how this one's been damaged and stuff. They're made to get damaged and, and things, but it just helps it have them last a little bit longer by doing that step. And it also just double checks and makes it level again. We can get new build plates too if they get really jumped up. Can't we just get a new one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like 13 bucks, but okay. they last like the rest of this school year. They should be fine. Okay. Yeah, they're made to last a long time and to be really nicked up. Everybody's still level? Okay, so I'm going to be ready for next step. Yeah, let me know when you guys got them level. Yeah, my teacher <laughs> was <laughs> Yeah, y'all haven't seen me do that yet, have you? <laughs> Awesome. So now unplug it. So the reason that we do that is to always remember by unplugging it when it's not printing, because one of the most common issues that can cause some uh, filament to get stuck is actually it getting heated and baked into the end of this. So if you have filament loaded and then you heat it up to level a bill plate or to change the filament or something like that, and you forget to take the filament out, it'll actually bake it inside of the end and that can cause a clog. So that's right. the most common way that clogs happen. So the easiest way to prevent that is to always just unplug it when you're not using it. Stars unplug it. It'll print for like three or four days straight. We've printed things on it that last close to 100 hours. That's fine because it's actually moving the filament through. But when it's not moving it through, that's when it, it just heats inside there. And it'll actually creep up above where the heating core is and expand. And then that'll get stuck because it won't be able to push down through there. So that's why we unplug it. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to load the filament. So you see the filaments right here. Let's put it through these little. You always want to put it through these holes so it doesn't come unwound. Just like fishing line or weed whacker line, it can get tangled if it, if it comes unwound on here. Okay, we still have some to unwrap, so give us a second. That's fine. And then it just sits on there like that. Well, except does he need to do it when it's stored or when it's working? Because I never, I don't know, I think it's, it doesn't. So do you want us to have, can you show him this actually? Yeah. Do you want it through this hole like that? Yeah, yeah, you just need to, you just need to take the plastic off. And then you'll feed it back through the hole, like this right here, to make sure it doesn't come unwound when you're not using it. And that's oh, you're using it, you take it out. Yeah, and then when you use it, you take it out of this hole, and then it'll feed in smoothly into the printer. Love it, okay. If you're not using it, then yeah, it sticks in the, in the inside hole. Okay. okay. Okay, are we all unwrapped? Ready to load? Okay, fun. Yeah? Okay, awesome. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to clip the end of this filament to make sure that we get all the melted bits and bent stuff off of there. So to do that, it comes with these clippers right here. And you can just clip the end of it into kind of a point. And that'll make it a lot easier to feed through. And it also won't like push a clog into the printer itself. And then once you clip that, then you'll take it out of this hole right here on the side. And then this is the part that you'll feed in right here. This is the extruder assembly, that's what this is called. And it's actually gonna feed into this hole and then all the way through here and all the way through this white tube until it won't go anymore. So you'll push it in there and squeeze this right here and then push it all the way through until it won't go. All the way in there. And then you wanna make sure that the filament doesn't come unwound like this because it can get tangled. You wanna make sure it always stays wound up. Does that make sense? 
It's a little tricky, but it goes right here. You squeeze this and then feed it through that hole, and then all the way through the white tube until it won't go anymore. You got it? And once you do that, you can go ahead and plug the printer back in. So it should go all the way up. Okay, did you guys plug them back in after we get the filament loaded? Yep, go ahead and plug it back in. Okay. And then you can pull this piece of paper off. You guys all with me? We're close. Okay. So, does everybody, does everybody, does anyone need help loading their filament? Okay, so then take your paper out and plug your printer back in. And then we're going to go to that preheat PLA again because now we're going to heat it up to actually feed the filament through and that can push a clog out or also it'll load your new color and push the old color out as well. So we're gonna go back to that same spot that we went to before where it's preheat PLA. So tap the button and then set up. And then you'll see underneath preheat PLA is soft pull. And that's how you'll remove the filament. So that heats the filament up to 100. And then when you pull it out, it pulls it out at a semi-solid state and gets rid of all the gunk and stuff that's inside there. So every time you unload it, you'll use preheat soft pull. And then when you load it, you'll use preheat PLA. So what we're doing now is preheat PLA. Yes, sir. And then tap it. And then you'll see the temperature is going to start to go up right there. Y'all with me? I think so. I think we're all with you. Okay, awesome. So while this is heating up, we're going to go ahead and move this all, whole assembly up a little bit. So you can move this stuff around by hand like we did, but you can also use the controls in the machine to do it. So to do that, we'll tap this button. And then go to controls. And then on the bottom of controls, you'll see move access. And then go ahead and tap that. So controls, move access. And then move one millimeter. And then the Z is what we're going to move because that's the up and down. So we're going to tap move Z and then just spin this knob to like 20 or 30. And then that's actually going to raise that z-axis up, and then that will give us some space to feed the filament through. And you'll see the filament be able to come out at the end. So what do you want us to raise the z to? 20 or 30. 20 or 30. That's about an inch. 26.4 millimeters is an inch, so around an inch. And you'll see the temperature is rising right here. It should be pretty close to 220 by now. Yeah, sometimes it'll fluctuate and go up and down a little bit, but it'll it'll consistently go up. Yeah, All right, so when it's at 220, then you could go to that same control and control the extruder and feed some out, or you can feed right here. You can hold on to this and push this through by hand. And then when you push it by hand, you'll see it's coming out of the end right there. You can see the end of my printer. And there it is. And that means that it's fully loaded. And you always want to use the tweezers or the pliers to reach in and grab it because that nozzle's hot. Even though the filament cools right away, the nozzle's really hot. So you always want to teach your students to reach in with the tools. And then, you know, it's fully loaded. Uh-oh, I dropped the Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Y'all see it feeding through? Yeah, it's, it's still coming. Okay. What is? What do we do if it if we feel like it can't go anymore? Is it? You'll you'll keep pushing it until you see the filament coming out of the end right here. Because when you push it to the end, you want to push it a little bit more. And if that nozzle's heated, then it'll feed it out. But the nozzle has to be heated to be able to melt the filament. You'll see it's coming out right there. When it gets to the end, yeah. push it out. That might feel stuck. <laughs> Yeah, you want to make sure that you lift it up a little bit too, otherwise the filament won't have anywhere to go. So the Z axis has to be lifted up. 
Yeah, we can go through those control steps if you guys want to check that out. For like right here, we'll tap the button and then go to controls. Okay, okay hold up, Drew. Let okay. me tell you what we're getting stuff, okay? We've got everybody, everybody's Z axis is up. And everybody's trying to feed their filament through and it's not going for us any further. What are we doing wrong? Did you feed the filament all the way through this white tube? Did it go yeah. all the way through like six or eight inches in? Yeah, it's just not coming out. I'm gonna keep trying, but that's where we're stuck at that part. It's heated right here. This should this should say 220 right here. Yeah, it does. It does. If it's See? not heated, then it won't feed through. But you'll be able to squeeze this and then push it all the way through. It has to go all the way through the white tube, and then it'll go to the end, and then out the end of the nozzle. Okay, so so we are at 220, and we're squeezing, and we're pushing the filament, and it's not moving. Is there a gap right here? Do you have a far enough gap away from this? Yes, we do. Okay, well, it, it, it goes through there as long as it went through this part right here. Because if you just push it into here, it's going to get stuck in this, like, throw part. So it has to go all the way through. It's going to go, like, six or eight inches in to the white tube before it feeds up the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's going, they're all yeah. going yeah. about the six or eight inches. They're, it's just not coming out. The yeah. 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 You can just keep pushing it and it'll, it'll come out. Yeah. Okay, we're going to keep pushing, but we're, it's not coming out. Okay, where else you keep pushing it? Yeah, I got it. You got it? It's just a little bit of a possible walk-in right here. And if you kind of wiggle this little tube around a little bit, you can yeah, just, you can just keep pushing it. And that's why it helps to clip the end into a point. So if you're having trouble, you can take it back out and then clip the end. Oh, okay. Okay. And it'll feed all the way through. And you can also have the machine do it. If you want to have the machine move it, you can go back to those same control steps that we went to before. And when you tap on this button and then go to control and then move axis, and then one millimeter again, you can actually go to extruder and then spin this and move the extruder. And then you'll see this gear up here on top moving. You can see this gear is gonna move. And that's gonna feed the filament through. Okay. You can do that as well. Can you just see your color? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, mine, Robert, will you come give mine a push? I'm not getting mine to come it might help to make sure that the end of it is clipped. So if you're having trouble feeding it through there, that probably means that it's curved inside there. And when it's pushing it down, the curve is actually getting stuck. So that's okay. what you want to clip off using this. So you can just hold this down and pull the filament back out. Okay. And then clip the end into a point and clip off all that stuff on the end. Okay. And then you can feed it back through. And okay. Let me get that done. And then you'll just squeeze this and feed it all the way through, all the way to the end. And then keep pushing it, and it'll push it out the end. And you'll see the filament coming out, just like this one. Just like that right there. Yeah, there you go. You just have to push it all the way to the end, and it might be kind of hard to push, and that's okay. I think you're actually melting it. Okay, let's learn. Let's learn. Let's learn. And then, Jackie, make sure that it doesn't come unwound on the side of this right here, how it's come unwound on the side of your spool. Make sure that yeah. that's all on the spool, because that will get tangled around this axis, and then it'll get stuck. Okay, yeah, that did happen. Did that happen to anybody else? What happened? See how mine came off the spool like that? There we go. Okay. There you go. Now it'll feed in there. You guys get it? Yeah, Sarah just had a good question. Like the toilet paper question. Does it matter if it's coming from the top or from the bottom? Not really. It's like the over under toilet paper debate. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Um, and then when you get it loaded and you see it coming out, then go ahead and just unplug it again. Because we don't want to leave it on and heated. So we do want to unplug it, that's not going to unplug it. Once you get it loaded, yes. Okay, unplug, 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 happening. And then what tool did you use to take the PLA off of there? 
You can use this or your tweezers right here. Okay, you guys see anything? Yeah, okay. 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 But yeah, we got to get this off of there. So, is there any reason to use the cool down function instead of unplugging it? You can do that if you want to. It's just easier to remember just unplugging it. That's why we talk about unplugging it. But you can use cool down. It's just, just not going to leave it on and heated. So just unplugging it is the easiest way for your students to remember to never leave it on and heated. But you can use cool down if you want. So okay. We pushed a little through, but I'm unplugging again. Is that right? Yeah. Following me. Awesome. All right, so you guys got them all unplugged, all loaded? Uh-huh, let's talk about that one. So then now we're ready to start our print. So they already have stuff loaded on the SD card. So if you plug your printer back in, and then make sure that you have an SD card. And if you don't have an SD card, then grab one and put it in the front of the printer. Okay, you guys don't have an SD card? And you'll click in the front right here. Right there, it'll click in and click out. So plug it back in and put it in the SD card? Make sure that everybody has an SD card so we can print something. And if there's stuff that's stuck around the edge of the nozzle, that's okay. Or you can reach in and just grab it and pull it out of the way if it's bothering you. It's up to you. Okay, card and plug back in. Okay. All right. So. Now that we've got our SD card and everything ready to go, ready to print. So if you saved your model in Cura, this is where you would select that model. So we tap this button and then go down here to where it says refresh SD card and that just refreshes it all. And then you'll go to print from SD. And when you tap that, you'll see the file that you saved from Cura. So on this one right here, there's that six sided die that I saved right there. So you just tap on it and then that will heat it up to 220. And then it will zero itself out and then start printing layer by layer by layer by layer. And it's going to print a line around the outside edge called a skirt. And that will get rid of all this gunk and stuff that's on the side of the printer as well. That might be hanging all of the nozzle. Um, Drew, do we need to lower our Z axis okay. before we start nope. printing? Or will it, just it will automatically do that. Okay. You just tap the button and then the robot will just print. You don't have to touch it again. It'll just do what it's supposed to do. Okay, I got blocked. You, you can click test prints to see the prints that are on the SD card. <laughs> and you'll see test prints, and then that's where you can go. What's all this other stuff on the SD card? Some of it might be from Best Camp. Yeah, it probably is. If there's other things in The user manual is also on the SD cards, as well as Cura, as well as some STL files of like an extra spool holder in case one of these breaks, and the, the files of the keychain and, and the die. So it'll bring up all the files. And then you can go through test print. Yep. Test print. Oh, and you can start playing. Interesting. So, how long does it have to play D&D? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been a dungeon master one or two times. <laughs> I recognize that D6. Yeah. I put that in there as like a subtle, uh, a subtle, you <laughs> make a guy not call it a D6. So, <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> Normal people just call that a dice. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I put the dice so, because when I first made it, it was D6 and it just confused everybody. Nobody knew what it was. So. <laughs> but I see that you had to specify six sided dice, even yeah. though for casual conversation, it's probably unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Repeating it over and over again. And then you'll see the printer when it starts, it'll start layering it layer by layer by layer to form the shape. So it's going to stack it layer by layer by layer by layer to form the three-dimensional model. You can kind of see right there as it's building. So once you, have, once you have chosen the file, it will heat up and print it. You should see 220 right here heating up. I heat up to 220, zero itself out, and then start. It's just dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. It's down the room temperature now. Second one, going. And then while those are heating up, we can talk about the pen a little bit, because I see those pens are there too. 
Do you guys yeah. have you used these yet? No, we haven't used them, but we're going to take them to the Maker Fair next weekend. Awesome. So you'll feed the filament in this back part right here. And the biggest okay. thing with the pens is to never yank the filament out or jam the filament in. Because if it gets yanked in or out, it can actually break the little gear that's inside there. So you always want to have kids use these arrows, the down arrow to load it and the up arrow to unload it. And then this is the speed here on the side. And you always want to make sure that the speed is all the way up here on top. When, when we take these to events, we actually tape this up. So you can't move this up and down and that makes it less confusing. Because if it's down here and then you hit this down arrow, barely any is going to come out of the nozzle right here. Okay. So that's the biggest thing is to never jam things in or yank stuff out. As long as you use that and the speed is up here, then you can form stuff and make stuff. You can, we make templates usually, and then we'll like make something on a template on a piece of paper. And then when it dries, you can just peel it up and then fuse it together using the pen. Cool. So it's like, it's like a fancy hot glue gun kind of. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now when you're at events with those pins, do you do any kind of training with the kids to tell them not to touch the filament while it's hot or does it cool yeah. off? Yes. Yeah, so you'll definitely want to do that because if uh, if you don't, then what happens is when the kids want to change filament, they will yank the filament out and that will instantly break the pen. And we can't cover these with the same warranty as, as these right here. Like if, if one of these falls off the table and breaks, that's covered in a warranty. But if one of these gets like broken from the inside internal and not taking care of it, then we can't cover that. Because um, it's not just, we don't build these ourselves like we do these. So okay. it's just something to keep in mind. And if they get clogged or something like that, you can just unload and load the filament again. Um, and the instructions on all the pens, you'll see like a folded piece of paper that's inside there that'll walk you through all the different steps. Okay, sweet. So how are they printing? Are they, are they sticking? Yeah. Does it look like it? Mine looks like a bird's nest, but then it's all, it's, there's a box coming on top of it, so I think we're okay. Yeah, you'll see it sticking layer by layer by layer. And if it turns into a giant bird's nest and knocks it loose, then that means it just needs to be a little bit closer. Okay. What about the other ones? Are they all seem to be going good and sticking on there? So I have just a question of curiosity. Yeah. How does it, I see that this blue uh, print screen is, uh, you know, the blue uh, sort of print open is just attached with these clips, so it's going to move a little. Does it use an optical eye to orient itself to the corner of that blue print? No, it uses these little, uh, right here, these are called end stop switches. Let me turn this on so you can see. They use these little switches right here, these little clip switches on X, Y, and Z. It clicks those and it knows where zero is, and then that is this corner right there. So when it clicks this one and then this one down here on the bottom, on the back, and then like the one that's down here. And then the one that's here on this up and down, it's kind of like buried, but it's inside this right there. And it clicks all three of those, and then that's where it knows that it's at zero. And that's what you set when you level the build plate. You leveled Z to zero, so it knows every time it moves over to that corner, that's at zero. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not sure that totally answers my question, though. Like, how does it know? For example, if I move this blue printer plate over, you know, half an inch or something. It won't know. It won't know. There it won't you go. Know, yeah. it, the, the robot is just following instructions on just to move here and then and then it prints here yeah. and then move here and then print there and then move here and print there. You can actually see where it's moving right here on the X, Y, and Z across there and the printing screen and that will fill up when it's done too. So it doesn't know if it's not working correctly. That's why right. it's like mechanical things to make sure it's all plugged in. Because it's so just going to send the instructions. If you had chosen to print something not in the center of the plate, but way over at the edge, and you move the plate in some stupid way, it would just print off the edge. Yes, it wouldn't know. And what it would do is it would move all the way to the side, and it would run into this and go da 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 Because it right. would keep going over if it wasn't quite lined up right. And if something like that happens, then just fail slate, unplug it. That's the quickest way if something goes wrong to stop it. What, it looks like. what uh... If, when you choose the, the fill level of the inside, mm -hmm. like, what does it build in there? Does it do like a honeycomb or a... So you can see, um, can't really see it on this one very well, but on, let's see. Um, I guess I don't really have one in here. Yeah, here we go. 
So you can see inside of this, you can see this structure. That's what it prints. Oh, so this is kind of a square frame, basically. Yeah. yeah, and it just makes like a little honeycomb pattern inside there to help it dur be durable and sturdy. Yeah. And so the thickness of your exterior wall, is that what we were adjusting earlier when we were studying the basic setting? Yes. And that's two layers on the outside. So we put 0 0.8, so it's going to be two what's called shells on the outside wall. And that's a pretty strong model. But if you want to make it even stronger, you can just keep increasing those by multiples of eight. So you, uh, or multiples of four. So you could go like 1.2 to make it even three shells on the outside edge if you wanted it to be. And, and, but if you do, like you were saying, uh, there's a various levels of fill. 20% you said is a reasonable fill level. Yeah. Yeah, usually like what you do on the smaller the models, the the usually the larger infill. So if it's gonna be small, I'll usually do like twenty percent. This one right here, this is like ten percent about filled in. So usually I'm around like five to twenty percent, depending on the model and how strong you want it to be. On the extreme end, if you did a hundred percent, then it would be all wall. It would be completely solid, yep. And it'd be heavy. So your wall thickness really would be immaterial because it would be yeah. yeah, it wouldn't matter. If you're doing wall thickness, it wouldn't matter. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm the exhibits guy here, and the things that we put out on the floor have to be utterly and completely indestructible. <laughs> so I might be thicker walls or even full fill on something. And yeah, plus, well, I'll 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 when you're making stuff, you'll see how strong and durable they can get. And yeah. but even like 25% is a really strong model. So okay. we did a long time ago when this was really new technology. We had we have a magnetic levitation track, and we had a guy make cars for our magnetic levitation track with a 3D printer, and I, he, you know, swore that they would be strong enough. It, it is the sad truth that nothing is strong enough, and they, you know, they were coming apart in levels. They were they fell apart relatively quickly, and I. I didn't even know, you know, I didn't know enough about to even ask intelligent questions about, uh, you know, what thickness or what spill or whatever he did. I do know from seeing them, you know, destroyed that they did have a honeycomb interior. Because they can be really light as well, you know, they're levitating. Yeah, by making that stronger inside, like you could even increase like 50%. I made like uh, I made a thing for my friend's swing set for his kids and I did 50% infill inside and I was like, the beginning of last summer and it's been outside and it's been fine this whole time and that's like hundreds of pounds that it's like been holding on so um mm -hmm. it can it can be pretty durable so did you design something like that on that uh, tinkercad or do you use a more substantial model? yeah i use tinkercad on that one because tinkercad's awesome for real quick things um you don't have to deal with a lot of the sketching and things that other programs can work with um, but i love on shape that's my favorite one on shape's awesome too I tried to learn to use Google SketchUp once and was I utterly failed in that undertaking. Yeah, SketchUp works too. You can actually 3D print from that, but it's a little bit of a learning curve for sure. I sure was. I had a hell of a time with it. And I thought what I was trying to do was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So Drew, if if a student gets a building tangled or or something weird happens, if they just unplug it, then they can when they chunk it and then immediately plug their printer right back in and start over. Uh, you can't start the print over, no. No, once you unplug it, you have to, uh, like, you can't pick up where you left off. You yes. have to start the entire print. If, they, if their filament gets tangled or clogged or something weird happens, mm -hmm. if they unplug it, it'll stop. Yes. And then they can scrape that off, and then when they plug it back in, they can start fresh with a new print. Yeah, totally. Just make sure that you feed the filament through to push out anything that might be in there. Okay. Just make sure the filament's all fully loaded. Well, do you guys have any more questions? I, I'm balancing this one, and um, one lengthwise side is fine. The other side, a corner is very tight, and the other two, the middle and the other corner, are very loose. And I can't get, I can't get the balance on one side. So that's but, where that's where it comes in with adjusting e above each one of the wing nuts themselves. And that's where it gets hard because when you tighten one, it's gonna push the other two up. And when you loosen it, it's gonna push them down like that. So you're dealing with three different ones. Right. Around. So when you get one adjusted, 
Then you can move to this one and get that one adjusted and then move to this one. And I would just stick with making sure that these above each one of the wing nuts are adjusted first before you try to go out and adjust on like these back corners and stuff like that. Because trying to go out in these far corners is more difficult to do. So until you get used to adjusting from above each one of the three wing nuts, then that'll help to get you started. And then once you get the feel of that, then you can move this like over to this corner if you wanted to adjust that. Because what happens is if you move over here, is if you tighten this one a whole bunch, if this is in this corner and you tighten this one, it's actually going to push it up in this corner. It's going to push yeah. it like that. So then if you loosen this one like right here a whole bunch, then it's going to push it down like that on the other way. Because there are three of them and they're moving around like this. Right. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So just focus on the spots above the wing nuts first. Yes, exactly. Yeah, focus on those spots first before the corners. Okay. So when this thing is done printing, well, two questions. Will the, will the print head just sort of move up and out of the way, or you just do that yourself when the time comes? Yep, it'll move out of the way. It'll move over to the side, and then it'll cool itself off automatically. It'll just clear up and out of the way. And then how do you actually, I understand that these really stick onto the, the printing plate pretty substantially. How do you, what's the best way to get them off? Use this. Uh, you can just take the print plate off, too. And then you can so, kind of bend it a little bit, and then be able to get this underneath it to be able to pop the prints off. Uh, so you can pop and so, what we have, uh, so we have a, a school teacher here who was telling us that they do this little trick with a, a glue stick or where they'll put a little glue stick on the plate. No, you don't need to do that. So these okay. are designed so you never have to use glue because glue gets really messy. And it's and basically you use a glue stick when you can't get the printer level very well and you're having trouble with things sticking. But this is a specially designed build tack. Um, called a lock build by a company called Steelman's in England, and it's awesome. And it's made so you never have to use glue or hairspray or tape or anything. This fits, takes the place of all that. And it'll last like three or four rolls of tape. So you don't have, ever have to worry about adding those other things. If, if you're having problems with a model sticking, then that means that it's a leveling issue and you got to practice leveling it. Okay. And okay. if you have something, like if you keep trying and you're having trouble getting something to stick and it's just not working, then contact us because we'll, we can do another video comp training to walk you through step by step on how to level it and walk you through. Maybe it's another issue we can go over and that's why we're here. So um, like if, if you guys are having trouble trying to figure something out, we got your back. I think everybody's playing pretty well. Yeah, and I just want all of you at this table to know that one of the reasons we chose this company is that it's lifetime free unlimited training. So if we get... <laughs> the biggest one because if it just stays on and heated like if you go to level the bill plate and then uh, the bell rings or something like that and a student forgets then that's how it causes like it'll just bake that filament into the end and that's the big thing that'll help stop it okay okay and, but how do you how do you actually retract the filament Did we just answer that you just squeeze this and pull it out after you do uh the soft pull so here yeah i can show you real quick you just okay. straight up pull it out yeah. but you can't pull it out unless it's Heated. So, like on this, for instance, we'll tap this button and go to setup and then preheat soft pull right there. And then that will heat this up right here, this temperature. So, see that temperature? It's already hot from if we just print it, can we just pull it out then? Yeah, if you want to, as long as it's hot. Okay. And then when this gets up to 100, then you'll just squeeze this right here and then pull it out. So you just squeeze it as soon as it's heated, and then pull it right out. And then you'll put it back on here, and then make sure it goes back into this hole on the side so it doesn't get stuck. Right. And the pretty soft, soft pull like feature. When you pull it out, a, that's what the soft pull looks like. That's all the gunk that I was talking about. When you do the preheat soft pull, it pulls all that stuff out, and that will help prevent clogs. So that's what you do if you haven't just printed something and it's not hot anymore. Yes. It has to be at least 100 degrees before you can pull the filament out. Okay. 
So awesome. And sort of a big picture question here. Sure. Like broadly speaking, you do the design and then you transfer the file over, or you, you know, you take and then you print, basically, right? Yep. You design well, and then you slice it. We talked about here really the last two steps. You design it and then slice it in Cura to save it to the SD card, and then you move that SD card to the printer, and then okay. you hit print on the printer. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you one more question, Drew. You know how you said the design step takes students the longest? Yes, definitely. What is your recommended amount of time you would spend with a student in the design phase? Um, well, I, it kind of depends on like how long your classes are and what age group they are. Um, normally, like when we move these around, we can do like a two or three minute like quick overview of Tinkercad and then just like set students loose and just let them create stuff um, and just let them like move around and explore and build whatever they want. And then they can kind of see that how they can move it and how they can shape it and create different designs and stuff like that. So a lot of that will come with just more familiarity with the CAD program. So if we did a lesson where we came into a classroom, we got the students set up on Tinkercad, let them start designing it, and then literally let them work on it with their teacher mm -hmm. for the week, then we could come back, would you say, the following week then with the printers to let them print their design? Sure. I mean, it kind of depends on what grade you're working with and, and like how long they're going to be working on Tinkercad because they could actually make something. Like when we do our mobile makerspace, we set up a uh, computers, Chromebooks that they can do CAD design on. And from when they sit down to start making a design until that design is printed is 45 minutes. But we've been doing this a long time so we can quickly go through that whole thing. So that's a lot just gonna take familiarity with you to know about the Tinkercad and the different things that you wanna show them how to do. And then also familiarity with the slicing program and like how that's all gonna work. So you could do it in like one class to try to make it in like an hour, but it'd be really rushed. So I would suggest at least like two or three classes to design something. Um, just so they'll have enough time to go through it. Okay. And we're actually working on lesson plans that are specifically focused toward teaching Tinkercad um, that are going to be done probably next week. So when we get done with those, we'll send them to you. I think you're right, though. I think you're showing them it and letting them lose. They're going to know more about it than we are. Just let them go crazy. The kids have showed me so many things on there that I didn't even know it could do. So it's awesome. Well, that's cool to know, though, that we could take like, a laptop with us anywhere and let them do it. Yeah, definitely. Super fun. Oh, thank you so much. How much of this filament will this particular thing use, would you say? Oh, well, the, the dice is going to use, like, barely anything, like maybe a meter. One of these rolls of filament is going to last you all year. They, like, you can print hundreds and hundreds of dice with one roll of filament. So it lasts a long time. And it's, it's like, 26 bucks to get a new one, so 27 bucks. All right. I will. It's made in Arkansas, too. So it's made in Springdale. Have a good deal. Start teaching my kids to play D&D &D so we can get those dice going. <laughs> you said you for the D20, D12, and on down? Yeah, you can go on Thingiverse. There's all kinds of D&D &D stuff. There's one, uh, this one guy scanned all of the advanced monster manuals, so you can actually print all of the original D&D &D models. Oh, cool. Those are, they're awesome. I think you guys, NASA has a file that you can click and print a pinhole viewer for the Eclipse on the base. Yeah. That's all kinds of awesome stuff. A thousand dollars a piece today. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, if you ever come to Springfield, let us know. We want to get your family some free admission passes to come visit us, okay? Okay, yeah. I'm totally down for that. Yeah, I'm in Springfield living now, man. We're actually, we're going to drive up. We're going to go to Jefferson City for the Eclipse. We're having like a company trip that we're yeah, all you should. You should. That's awesome. So, yeah, we're really excited about it. But yeah, next time I'm in Springfield, I'll totally let you know. For sure. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, well, hey, next same thing goes here. Next time y'all are in Fayetteville, come by the shop. Come see how, see how we're doing. Yeah, we thought about taking a field trip, and um, we want to go to the Amazium and then come yeah. by. So. The Amazium is awesome. We work a lot with them. They do some really fantastic stuff. The Amazium is awesome. Beth, do you have anything else you want to know? Yeah, I'm okay. This has been great, and thank you for – Recording this, we're definitely going to do that. <laughs> I'll share it with you and then the other links that I talked about too. So, you guys have any more questions? I think we're good. Do you guys have anything else you want to know? Any other tips you can think that would help us? I think we pretty much covered it. Yeah, just making sure that your Cura settings are set up right and your build plates level. Um, those are the two big things. So, okay. wonderful. Thank you so much, Drew. Y'all are fun. See ya. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.